So this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, eight years ago, I came to Japan, and one of the driving forces behind me coming here was straight up. I wanted to play fighting games, and I wanted to play fighting games in at least what was in my mind at the time for a lot of those games. The most competitive battleground for a lot of those games, that was JP Arcades, right? Things have changed a little bit since then, obviously, with the advent, even before Corona, even when, when I was just out here originally uh there was kind of that sensation where you know a lot of these arcades they're they're dying they're going out of business and all that other you know e economics right 2012 i came to japan and i was off the train off the airplane for less than two hours and i found myself in yotskaido yotskaido uh the company that i was working for i was in their guest house and man i was i remember getting off the train i was so excited now the truth is this is in bum the fuck nowhere this isn't middle of countryside Japan. I didn't even really know what I was looking at, what was around the station, but I went to the guest house, and I remember like it was about seven or eight o'clock, man. I got out, I just, I just wanted to go. I, just, I was like, man, I just wanna see what's what's around here. I walked around the station and I saw this. This is Lucky Yotskaido Estacion. And I was like, uh, okay. I see some posters in the window. I walk in, the whole first floor is nothing but driving games, amusement games. Uh, it's really wide, it's really spacious. Second floor, if you fuck with fighting games at all, man, this place had everything. And I had that feeling the first night in Japan of like, damn, I'm really here. This is tight. A year or two later, I went back to Yotsukaido and it was gone. Just like that. It can happen that easy. It can happen that quickly. When I first came to Japan, I went to Shibuya and I was just walking around. And I happened to just incidentally walk into Shibuya Kaikon. This was one of the last standing non-chain arcades in, in Shibuya. I remember I walked into it, I was like, oh man, there's is this place, right? If you have any doubt about like the legend status of this place, they immortalized it in Persona 5. That game y'all can't stop talking about. There's people that worked on this game that went there, they know what they're talking about. Seven fucking floors, wall-to-wall -wall cabs, damn near anything you could want to play. Shmups, rhythm games, classic stuff, fighting games, 3D, 2D, you name it. On the inside, when I say wall-to-wall, -wall, I mean, wall to wall, they had everything you can imagine, especially if you played some Hokuto no Ken, some Third Strike, Tekken, Virtua Fighter, you name it, they had everything. And I just remember being in there, and again, it was that same feeling as when I was in that Yotsukaido arcade. I was like, man, I can't believe I'm here right now. I cannot believe, like, this exists. Like some shit out of a fucking fairy tale, right? They had the whole 50 yen area and everything. Oh, man, this was crazy. And when I tried to go back the next month, gone. Shut down forever. That was a big deal. In 2012, that was happening. So, you know, even when I got here, it was uh, a very, like, fleeting sense of, like, you know, these arcades, these places, they're they're on their way out. I didn't really have the know-how or the means to do anything about it, man. There's been lots of people from the West who have come over here through fighting games or through other means over the years. But for me, I wanted to try to do something to where I could share that with people. Because I think it's really sad or unfortunate that young people who like video games or whatever, they will never know or understand the rush that I got when I walked into one of these places. And I'm not saying everything about these places was great or anything like that, but it's just, I wanted to do something to share that with as many people as possible, especially with, you know, the advent of COVID and everything that's happening over here with the economy. Some of these places, I'm not sure how long they have left. Uh, so about five years ago, uh, we had the idea, Gina as well, of showing you guys that. Not just in Tokyo either, where a lot of people, you know, you can find a lot of videos on YouTube, which is, oh, the number one arcade in Tokyo, eh, with, the, with the big ass, you know, corny ass thumbnails or whatever. I wanted to go bigger than that. I wanted to show you the whole fucking country, the whole thing as, as, as I've experienced it, or share that as much as possible with you guys. So I started this video project about four or five years ago. Juna got a couple videos. The, he shot Mikado and shot Hay for you. Uh, I picked up the torch where he stopped and I went all over the country and I took all the video footage that I had and I cut up videos showing and introducing you guys to all the arcades from all over Japan just to give you guys a taste of what it was like over here because again they might not be there tomorrow you know.